Patients often come to me with uh, questions about uh, their lipoprotein fractionation or their cholesterol fractionation studies. I tend to steer them away from that. Um, and it's not so much because uh, the fractionation studies are not true. It's not so much because they're not relevant. It's really more of an issue of priorities. As we've mentioned before multiple times, and most viewers of this channel know this, over half of people that have heart attack and stroke have normal cholesterol or LDL values. So getting way deep into LDL uh, is usually not the top priority. For most folks, again, the top priority is lifestyle. It's getting to a proper relative fat mass, a proper um, exercise pattern, a proper um, macronutrient or diet um, focus. But again, because there's so much discussion out in the uh, rest of the medical community and with patients, I thought I'd do a quick video to cover just what is lipoprotein fractionation or cholesterol fractionation and what does it mean? What do you do with it? Well, as you see from this picture, this is a, um, a cholesterol fractionation is looking at the different types of uh, particle populations. You've got HDL, which is known as the good cholesterol. It's the smallest and densest of them all. Then you've got LDL, which is known as the bad cholesterol. Um, it's a little bit larger. And uh, here you've got LP little a, which has that Kringle uh, repeat section on it. We've got several videos on LP little a, and I'm not going to go there on this video. We've got VLDLs, or very low density lipoproteins, and uh, chylomicrons. We're not going to cover the VLDLs or uh, chylomicrons other than just to make a quick mention a few minutes uh, from now. Actually, I'll go ahead and make some of that mention now, or some of that point now. Um, what's the difference between these families? For the most part, it's size and um, amount of fat in it. The H and the L and the VL stand for high density, or HD, VL, uh, LD, high density, low density, and intermediate density and very low density uh, proteins. In other words, remember this, protein, it's pro, these uh, particles are made of protein and, um, and fat. It's protein on the outside with the hydrophilic layer, uh, the part that uh, touches the water in the blood on the outside. And a lipophilic or oil loving or fat loving component of the protein on the inside. So that's how the packet is made. We'll cover that a little bit later. That's a little bit of a digression right now. Let's go back to the, um, the focus on the fractionation pattern itself. So what the fractionation is doing is looking to see, okay, how much of the LDL is in this very unhealthy section, the small, dense LDL? Because we know that those are the ones that uh, uh, of the LDL-related risk, the SD, small dense LDLs, are the ones that, cr that have the most risk. Now, we used to say they uh, slipped into uh, between the cells of the intima, the damaged intima. Uh, recent research has shown that, no, that's, that may be the case, but actually, small dense LDL is actually transported from the bloodstream through the intima uh, lining cells. So again, you know, there's always something new coming up, something new to learn. So based on that assumption that it's important to look at, look at what, how much of your population is these small, dense LDLs, then we get into a thing, the labs will get into a thing uh, called fractionation. And I'll cover that fractionation again in this video. First of all, for the lipoprotein fractionation, what the lab report summary looks like. This is a uh, typical patient. Actually, this patient's uh, doing fairly well for the most part, but he's still got a little bit of um, uh, smaller LDL particles and more of those smaller particles than we want. That's what this shows us. But uh, it doesn't show us a whole lot like any summary. Let's get into more of a visual look at it. Now, <clears throat> visually, again, what the, uh, the fractionation process is doing 
is measuring the number and density of these populations. So you remember the HDL were clearly the smallest and the densest, so they're on, over on the left-hand side. LDL was the next up, so they're all on the right-hand side. In both populations, as you can see from this green and red on the population uh, indicators below, it's healthier to have the larger, uh, less dense HDL. It's also healthier to have the larger and less dense LDL. On this patient, it could be a little bit better if they were if these uh, peaked over at, in the large category, but they don't. But you also see the vast majority of this patient's um, uh, LDL particles are really on this larger end. We don't have a, a peak over here, which is again, if you're looking at LDL related risk, that would be. Well, that would be the peak that would be more of an LDL risk. Uh, underneath that, you have some numbers, which again, help you, uh, for the people that rather look at numbers than images themselves. Uh, this person has what's called a B pattern in that um, it doesn't peak here at the highest. It does peak a little bit lower, uh, but Again, so that's, I get so many patients this, that come to me saying, well, you know, I've got a B pattern. That's a real problem. I've been working on it a lot. I'm struggling with it. And my advice for reasons I've already discussed is let's worry, let's put the B pattern LDL stuff, uh, the, the whole fractionation thing aside, and let's focus on our priorities. Uh, I can explain it to you like I, I have in this video, but again, let's focus on our priorities. Now, <clears throat> Again, I got into, uh, in this video, we got into a lot of details, apolipoprotein, which is the protein part of the, the packets. Uh, we got into uh, fractionation and looking at the details of the differences between uh, the different populations. Let's go way back up to about 30,000 feet and talk about, for just a reminder, why do we have those proteins and why do we put the, the fats and oils in our bloodstream in tiny microscopic packets anyway? Well, a uh, basic component, oil and water don't mix. If you, we all know that and we all know if you got water, a glass of water and you poured oil in it, um, it, the oil would form a big blob at the top. If that happened in our bloodstream, that blob would cut off the, uh, it would lodge somewhere and cut off the flow of the blood, which is 90, over 95% water, to the, that tissue. That's the same thing as a, a um, clot embolus. And, and an embolus, that's, embolus is the medical term that we use for something that flows through the bloodstream, is not the same consistency as the rest of the blood, so it will, can lodge somewhere and cut off uh, the blood supply. So you can have fat a fat embolus just like you can have a uh, clot embolus. We talk many times in many videos about forming clot embolus or emboli, which is the plural, um, using hot, when hot plaque touches um, the blood, liquid blood. Now where's, where are the cases when this actually happens in human life? Uh, with large wrecks. So orthopedists that see patients that have been in a 60 mile per hour wreck uh, and have multiple broken bones. When you get those kind of, uh, that kind of trauma, you get, uh, especially to multiple large uh, bones, the bone marrow has a lot of fat in it. And quite often these fat globules will just uh, get into the bloodstream and form an embolus. These people can have heart attacks, strokes, uh, kidney, uh, major chunks of, uh, tissue uh, taken out by these fat emboli. Um, surgery is in its basic form a, a form of trauma as well. And this was a headline from a woman that died from uh, a fat embolus attributed to surgery. So again, that gets us back up to maybe uh, 30, 50,000 feet after we spent a little bit of time in the weeds. If you made it that far with me, uh, thanks again for your interest and attention. And again, 
let's not get too focused uh, on LDL. It's important, but uh, most of us have far bigger priorities. If you hit the uh, like button, and for sure if you subscribe or share, the algorithm reads that as a strong message that humans think this is interesting and important information. And the algorithm can share it more than any of us humans. Um, <clears throat> speaking of uh, sharing, uh, the, one of the best ways of sharing is on social media. We've got active Facebook, Instagram, and uh, LinkedIn uh, activities going on right now. We've recently started up things in uh, Pinterest and uh, Twitter, so we'd love to see you there. Check us out. Finally, um, <clears throat> uh, with over 500 videos, a lot of people are saying, I can't find this video or that video. Our new social media uh, manager, Kim Hermosa, is starting to work on ways to help with that. So join the community. Uh, you can click on the links below, and um, <clears throat> you can get a little bit better uh, access. Thank you again for your interest.